What's up guys, Subderic here, back for another VOD review. Today, another Dish Soap VOD review from the Tactician's Cup, number one. Uh, like I talked about in the last VOD review, if you didn't catch it, Dish Soap dominated on the first day, and I mean, he's just, he's the reigning world champion. He said he wasn't even gonna play in this cup, and then he decided, I don't know, maybe probably just for fun, probably just because he was bored. You know, I'm sure somebody like Dish Soap is so competitive, he took the first cup off to try to like rest up and be like, you know, like, I, I'm too burnt out for playing so much TFT, but this guy's still playing a lot of TFT and is still so good at the game that he said, you know what, I'll, I'll probably just play in the second cup and he's just smurfing on people already. We watched a really, really cool game yesterday. Uh, and this is another really, really interesting game from what I skimmed through. He plays uh, another comp that I wanna talk about that is a vertical, but I think a lot of people are not uh, really playing around that much. So we get the early double Vex drop here, but with these items, quite unlikely that we're actually going to end up playing four mages. And also mages are just in a quite bad spot nowadays uh, with the nerfs to Vagar, the nerfs to Vex. Um, so probably not going to be a vertical uh, mage game. We could even, I like uh, though that Dishop is actually holding on to this mage's opener with the potential ID. He's only on to a few openers here. Uh, he's holding on to this uh, this Vanguard plus potentially Hunter's opener here. He has no multi-strikers yet, so he doesn't have that much incentive to hold Cassidy. There is an Elise pair here. I wonder if it's Sell Vex and hold on to the, some of the stuff or if he's going to, yeah. Okay, I, I like that. Sell sell the mages. We don't have three mage at this point. Mage is not that strong and holding on to these shapeshifters feels really good, especially when we have a Twitch pair, right? If if there's a world where we find Twitch 2 plus a Namzi plus a uh, Shibana, we could very easily have a strong board. And we also are looking like we're going to play uh, AD from this spot with these items. LW Slam seems very straightforward. Even a Renan Slam, maybe. Uh, Lucky Gloves at 2-1 tends to be quite bad. Hard Commit actually tends to be quite good as a first augment. Buried Treasures is also quite good. They they did nerf Hard Commit, actually, so I wonder what the... the oh, never mind. Do not listen to me. Hard Commit sucks now. They nerfed it pretty hard this patch. It was quite broken last patch, but this patch yeah, don't take that augment. I, I was looking at some some very disturbing stats there. Fairy Trudge and Freaky Friday, about the same strength. Probably reroll Freaky Friday um, to, yeah, just get the extra reroll down. And now we have level up, which is a fun option. Um, it, it actually is a lot better now that they've buffed it, but Barry Treasures is probably going to be the pickup here. We'll see. Um, it's Prismatic Party as well. So you, uh, I wonder actually if you're in Prismatic Party, how that changes things. I think you can. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, let, let's do a quick stats check. On Prismatic Party specifically, this is something you can do in Explorer. Um, well, oh, wait. Why, why can't I? There's only this many portals? Okay, well, maybe maybe I can't check it. Um, I think Meta TFT has a, a portal checker, though. Stats, Explorer, um, Prismatic... Yeah, Prismatic Party. Okay, because I, I want to actually... You can look at Augment specifically in Prismatic Party, and I feel like this actually might matter a little bit. Buried Treasures, I wanted to know, 4.30. Um, what? This is just Diamond Plus. We can uh, filter down to, like, Masters Plus to get a little bit better stats for our purposes. Uh, 4.34, and then what about Level Up? I, I was actually curious, because I, I wonder if, like, Level Up actually is stronger uh, in, uh, in like, a Prismatic Party, potentially. Eh, it says it says they're basically exactly the same, so I, I think you can go for whichever one you're most interested in here. It looks like Dish Up is leaning Buried Treasures, because the idea is that, like, Prismatic Party, you're going to get more resources generally, um, so, you know, you could potentially say that something like Level Up is going to be good, because we're probably going to have more gold this game, so we're going to be able to actually, you know, like, use it better. Um, you could also say, kind of, like, the reverse, that uh, Buried Treasures is going to be good, because we can get some, like, really strong combat augments and end up multiplying these, um, these items that we end up getting. So, you know, imagine if you get a really strong combat uh, augment, you have, you know, two units with a bunch of items, that feels really good. Like, imagine we can't get Lucky Gloves anymore because we already rolled it, but imagine if we got a bunch of gloves and then we could take Lucky Gloves, that would be crazy. Uh, sword here, that BT that we talked about uh, last video, maybe we'll end up seeing that come back here. I, I There is like a Last Whisper BT idea um, that could be slammed here. The only problem is Last Whisper is not yeah, okay, we are we are going to make the BT, it looks like, and just throw that onto Twitch for now, actually. Okay, yeah, and, he's, and we're just playing this Frost Open here. Fighting build a bud Poppy, so it's going to be a pretty tough fight to win. Maybe there's a chance. But yeah, the, the other thing that I was going to say is, if you want to build something like Class Whisper, it does kind of lock you into a few different comps. I'm um, going to also hold on to the... It's actually interesting that he wanted to play the Hui over the, uh, the Zelayan here, but okay, I mean... I could see it, certainly. Yeah, I mean, Z Zillion is just such a good early game unit that I, I could actually see something like this being stronger. The only issue is you kind of need to make gold here, and you probably want to hold on to this Twitch pair here. So, yeah, we're just going to stick with the BT slammed. Um, not going to slam a Last Whisper yet. Last Whisper, it's kind of an interesting item because it locks you out of a few comps. Like, Varus doesn't really love Last Whisper. You can you can play Varus with Last Whisper if you have to, but Varus feels kind of bad with Last Whisper. You can throw it onto Callista though, which is one of the more popular comps these days. So, we'll see. Dishop hasn't done, like, a full scout yet to see how 
many people are actually potentially angling for Kalista here. So we'll see. Uh, there is a pan on the carousel, which, yeah, Dishlip's going to take here. So, and I, I think, okay, so immediately there are a lot of uh, different realms we could go down here. Obviously, it's never going to be something like Mage. Multi Striker, Hunter, and Warrior are probably the big ones to call it here. Maybe even Shapeshifter if you want to do something crazy. Uh, but these three are the ones that I am looking at right now. Uh, Warrior obviously makes a lot of sense. We watched YVY play that Warrior, uh, Virtual Warrior game that he did very well with, and we have the BT. I mean, also, we have a lot of this stuff. If you wanted to play Warrior here, we have BT Titans plus Warrior Emblem here. So, you know, that, that is something that you could look at um, if, if you were interested in playing Virtual Warrior. The only downside is we don't have any Warriors right now on this board. Something like a, a Hunter Spat actually makes a lot more sense from our spot um, because, you know, we have two Hunters already. If we could get uh, four Hunter on this board, we would be in an amazing spot. So we'll we'll see what it ends up being. For now, we're just going to continue our loss streak. Our board's not that, that strong. We're getting a few uh, notable kills here, fighting uh, at what cost, level six, and still uh, only a four unit loss, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, pick up our Rod here. Which, I mean, if you wanted to say that we're like certainly gonna play towards warriors, uh, or not warriors, hunters, um, you could go with the idea of making like a Gwynsus Rageblade, saying that that is going to go into a Jinx later and play for that. Uh, they're also just like a Crown Guard as a solid slam. Sadly, we're gonna fight T-Lights here and end up losing our loss streak. Not much we could do versus this. It's really, it's impossible for us to full open versus T-Lights here. So actually a pretty tragic uh, stage two. Uh, at least we end the stage 20 gold with a Twitch pair and a Kog'Maw pair. But I mean, win, loss, loss, loss into win feels quite bad. We do get, um, that is our final item, right? So we are going to have a couple of bows here. A lot of bows, actually. I feel like a Last Whisper will end up getting slammed uh, very likely, though. I mean, I guess you have the possibility of making a red buff, but then, uh, you know, like Last Whisper, I think, is quite good when you're playing around, uh, if you wanted to potentially play around Hunters. Um, so we'll see if that's what we end up doing. We still don't actually have the Hunter emblem if we want to make it. Um, all right, random on our effect is pretty decent. Some extra rerolls is pretty good. I don't know that we were going to wait to use them. Okay, yeah, we just get our Magnetic Remover here. It actually is going to be the red buff. Wow, onto the Kog'Maw to guarantee the heal cut and the crown guard like we talked about. So yeah, he doesn't actually... Man, I, it feels like Dish Soap is actually very uninterested in making this last whisper here. I, I think so many more people are recently ha have been interested in making even shroud over last whisper so we'll see what ends up being what this game i feel like last whisper is fine in vertical hunter if that's what we play but i think the nice thing about the red buff uh and this crown guard is that we we aren't committed to anything right you can still play anything from these items all right more items is probably not what we need maybe a radiant refactor here uh but we don't really want so like, obviously we can't take blinding speed even for you friday we're gonna be a little bit item locked on our units if we take another item augment here um so i don't really want to take those there is the oh yeah we actually can get lucky gloves we got lucky gloves plus here but i wonder if it's not even lucky gloves plus here because it does give you three gloves and we have two gloves open here so we're gonna have a lot of lucky gloves but with buried treasures once again, it's almost like a situation where we might have too much. I think I actually like Hunter Crest better here. We can very easily play for a six Hunter here with Hunter Crest. Gives us a Kog'Maw too, and we can just slam our Renans there. I actually love Hunter's Crest in this spot. Uh, Lucky Gloves, obviously, is certainly a consideration, though, because a lot of Lucky Gloves is a lot of goodness. Uh, Dish will probably do a stats check here right now, actually, uh, looking at uh, at Hunter Crown. Another item augment. I mean, it has to be Hunter Crown, right? Yep, there's the Hunter Crown there, the Kog'Maw too. We uh, don't quite have the final Hunter unit, so yeah, we're just going to have to throw this onto a Waterwick right now and um, and make another Crown Guard, actually. Wow. I mean, it's it's probably the best slam in the situation here, but I'm, I'm a little surprised by the double Crown Guard make, but I mean, it's not bad. I wonder where these are going to go late game because um, oh, there's Twitch 2. Still no um, final like Hunter on this board. We can hold on to the Wukong. I have seen like Jinx boards with Wukong do well if they have stuff like Six Hunter or like Renan's builds, but I wonder if we even really need to play. Like, we only have the one Wukong at this point, and these items, I mean, we could actually do a quick stats check here. I, I don't actually mind uh, looking at like Wukong items here because I actually haven't played around this new Wukong yet. The idea with the rework is that you really don't want to be building a bunch of gargoyles anymore, though the statistics say that basically it's it's still completely fine. This is the correct patch, right? Yeah. The stats basically still say gargoyle is piss onto Wukong, so uh, so maybe the rework didn't change things too much. Looks like the stats still just say build a bunch of gargoyles onto him. Maybe throw a warm ox in there. Okay. Well, good to know that his Biss isn't... It looks like his Biss is now gargoyle, gargoyle, like warm ox instead of gargoyle, gargoyle, gargoyle being Biss, but I mean... It really looks like things haven't changed so much. Uh, unless I'm not on the wrong patch, right? I don't think so. 
14.18, pretty sure that's current patch, but whatever. Um, we're holding onto these gloves, by the way, not making a lucky gloves or not making a thief's gloves uh, because of the possibility that we we want to potentially play for a last whisper later. Gonna take the sword here to guarantee the hunter's path though. I think that's absolutely necessary here um, because sword is a, a kind of priority uh, item component. So, you know, if we don't take this here, there's a world where we never get a hunter plus one, but there, there's four hunter. If you guys haven't played around 600 yet, this is, obviously what this video is going to be about and a trait that I'm I'm really, really hyped to, to talk about because, uh, because yeah, once these these hunters really get going, they do uh, insane work, especially if you get to something like a Jinx 3. But I mean, at this point in the game, I doubt we're even going to play for Jinx 3. We have zero Jinxes at 3-5. It's probably just going to be a push levels, fast 8, 6 hunter game uh, and then just play around Olaf like Jinx duo carry, maybe put items on Kog'Maw uh, and, you know, we'll see from there. Uh, you could opt to make a level here to try to win. You could also roll for charm here. Uh, we are fighting the 100 streaker here. Um, yeah, I, I think a, a scout is certainly in order or is is absolutely necessary here. We scout T-Lights. His board's pretty strong. I think Disho might be saying that, you know, he doesn't actually have that high odds of winning this fight, even if he picks up like a solid charm here. So he's just going to sit. Uh, we do fight the weakest person here, which is really, really nice for us. Black Sheep here. So we get our six streak. But yeah, I mean, there's a 100 streaker and there's T-Lights with the, uh, the three star... Uh, the, the three star zigs I, yeah i wonder if you in in his head there he was like if i lose my streak here i'm okay with that that that's just you know life i can see it uh gotta use this remover here right um i would assume you would use it on kogma Ooh, all right I, I, a little a little rare miss from dish soap here uh he doesn't actually use the remover oh that is a double jinx which is fantastic here um absolutely should have used the remover there on one of the units i'm not sure 100 percent who he would have wanted it on um oh a briar is nice you play for I don't actually know what are we going to play for. I mean, it's got to be Hunter Briar on our board, right? Maybe like a four shape board here. We have this Nasus already going to get six Hunter in here, going to move these crown guards over there and then going to make a Hodge to finish out Briar items. I mean, this is fantastic. Hunter Briar must be nice and it fits pretty well with the Frost uh, where we can just play Twitch plus the Swain plus the uh, eventually the Olaf. We don't have Olaf yet, right? We're just playing another random Frost unit. Maybe still the Warwick. Yeah, we have Vanguard and probably that. Last augment here. Once again, I feel like we want another strong combat augment. Tiny but deadly jumps out to me. Seems fantastic here. A lot of attack speed for that AD with the hunters. Uh, and it's gonna be like a tiny but deadly for our um for our Olaf and, and our Briar is gonna jump all around the board. So I have to imagine this is the take. Roll the dice. It's a solid augment, but I, I can't imagine that it's good. Ooh, Giant and Mighty's really good as well. Um, you could maybe make the call that you just need more frontline. You have enough damage here. I probably would still go tiny but deadly here, but this is actually like a really, really tough call. I don't know what the statistics say. You could you could stats check this. Looks like he made his call though. Just do like six hunter and then go to augments and look up like tiny but deadly and then also look up um giant and mighty. I mean the stats say it's giant and mighty. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I could see it. I could certainly see it being giant and mighty here. Um, just to give us a little bit more frontline. There's the Olaf, which is fantastic here. We can fit four shape in here and yeah, just play six hunter. Hunter onto the um Hunter onto the Nasus here is kind of funny. And he's actually an itemized Kogma over the Jinx here with the idea that Jinx is just too nerfed to be uh just be strong these days. I mean, I could certainly see it. And yeah, I mean we get the four shape in. This board looks fantastic, actually. It's a really, really creative uh board using the Briar with the Hunter. Uh even the Hunter on Nasus is like not nothing you know he'll he'll start bonking people so i actually i love this i love this setup for just soap here and then at this point we're just picking up charms feeding our briar every round because we're so far ahead uh and looking at just pushing levels here i mean i love uh, holding onto the swains was such a good idea um for the for the front line of this board just because he fits so well and then obviously the briar was a bit of a high roller uh but uh but i mean hey you can't you can't uh blame him for for hitting a briar i mean it's one briar and uh these days oh my god this briar is just a monster with these items and it is also like a nice uh place to put the bt obviously we could have put the bt onto olaf here but um we didn't end up getting that uh you know olaf very quickly so now olaf's just sitting here unitemized but it's fine we got a hunter briar and a hunter nasus here uh, and you can just see you know with the 600 we are tearing through boards here uh, Last Whisper could be a pickup here. I didn't uh, catch what other component. We have Belt open as well, I think. But Last Whisper seems like the easy pickup here. Fantastic that we get this now. Yeah, we have Belt open, so it could be maybe like an even Shroud, but I don't think so. Nine Streak here. You have to determine, ooh, I mean, this is like fine combat here. Uh, I don't know if we really need, uh, I mean, it's not like we need like a Noms or anything. Um, may actually, actually maybe we, is there a world? You could theoretically cut, say like Jinx, 
Um, and yeah, he's actually holding on to the Namzi with the idea that maybe we could get um, Dragon in later. We could we could play uh, Jinx. We we could cut Jinx, play Namzi, and then also cut um, cut this Nico and play Shivana. And then we'd actually have Dragon on our board, which would guarantee the heal cut. They're actually lacking right now, so I think it's actually very smart to hold this. The only downside is Namzi is obviously like a worse unit than um, Jinx, I, I would think. Um, but I think just the the getting Dragon in for the heal cut is enough that you would probably do it. I could also cut Kogma, but I think. Uh, I mean, certainly the way that uh, Dishop has itemized Kog'Maw over the Jinx suggests that he thinks Kog'Maw is a stronger unit than Jinx, which after the nerfs to Jinx, I could certainly see Jinx uh, statistics don't look amazing, but this is going to be an 11 streak for Dish Soap. It feels like every single game I watched him play in tourney, he was just giga win streaking with a strong board like a beast. There's the Shivana if he wants it, so let's see if he does make the swap out, um, or if maybe his idea was something else i'm not sure actually because yeah i mean there's no eight hunter to play for so it's not like we're holding namzi for that down the line um yeah maybe he is just holding the namzi just in case i don't know really because yeah okay he's gonna I, I think he thought better of it after thinking about the fact that he would have to downgrade a jinx 2 to a namzi 1 um which yeah it doesn't doesn't really look stronger if you think about it oh he's going to take the um the the big gambit here probably making a it's a bt or a sterax here i actually wonder or or a renans i guess um yeah he's actually gonna make the renans on a jinx here i, I actually after thinking about this for a sec, I love this. It's an Olaf 1. We want to play for the win here with Big Gambit. We want to play for like the fast 9 in this spot here. So we just want our board to be strong as possible. And itemizing Jinx here is certainly better than itemizing an Olaf 1 here. Um, so genius from uh, Dish Soap. Sadly, he doesn't get rewarded for it. He does lose that fight. Going to level up here. He's holding onto this Nora as just a random in here. What else could you throw onto this board? He's holding maybe Fiora as like Witchcraft. I, I mean, I guess he could just play a random Nora here. I mean, you could play like Double Briar here. Okay, he's going to play the Nora for now. Okay. I, I like the Nora as just a random threat type unit, uh, random plus one. And also, Nora onto Briar, uh, getting the Yumi onto Briar is quite fantastic. I wonder what. Okay, I'm interested to see what he team planned. Oh, he, he did that team planner so fast. What did he throw into team planner? Briar plus who? Oh, plus Morgana is his idea uh, of just getting Witchcraft in and like a solid unit. We don't have a uh, Preserver on this board, right? Um, so it's just it's just a Witchcraft Morgana, which feels pretty sad, but I mean, it's not nothing. There's a Namzi. Lucky find here is probably fine. It's obviously not like an amazing charm, but we are like kind of poor in this situation. So yeah, I think taking a charm like this makes sense. Um, and yeah, I don't think we're going to go for like Nasus through this game. I think he he might have done a scout there to see if uh, if there are Nasuses that were contested. Um, man, but just look at this board with 600 tearing through every single unit. The second any of these hunters get a kill, they just get an insane amount of AD. Like, ah, uh, it's it's just so insane. What What is the actual uh, number here? I want to actually pull it up. Real quick, uh, I'll look over here, traits to, to see what the actual numbers are on Six Hunter because I haven't got to play this yet. So yeah, you get 70% AD and you get 100% after, 110% after takedown. Oh, it also gives you a little bit of AS. That's cool. I didn't even know that. That's cool. So maybe that's why he's a little bit less likely to uh, to take the tiny but deadly because he's you know confident getting a little bit of AS from Hunter. Um, pick up a Deathblade here for Jinx. Once again, just, you know, a solid item here. We also picked a Briar 2 while I wasn't looking, which is a huge upgrade here. This is going to allow us to just absolutely destroy boards here. It's actually wild that our front line is, is staying so strong with just the Swain here. But I mean, it's, it's not like you really want to move the Crown Guards over to Nasus. So, I mean, I think Swain has to be our main tank here. And uh, I mean, it seems good. It, it seems actually quite, uh, quite solid here. Oh, sorry. I got to move on to the, the Dish Soap, like his stream, I think, went down. Um during this game so i actually have to move over to the second vod i was prepared for it um so uh so yeah let me move forward okay now we're back all right and and five six is uh i think what we were right at we're fighting actually a pretty strong callista board here callista one of the strongest boards uh no not one of the strongest just the straight up strongest board and you can see it took us a while to get through those units, but the Briar too is just a monster and the Callista cannot get through all this healing and all this HP that we have on the Briar here, actually. I'm gonna burn removers here to potentially maybe move something else onto Briar? I wonder what the idea is here. I don't really see where the other items would go. Cause like you kind of have to go BT Hodge on Briar. I mean, maybe his idea is like, I'll get like a Sterax or something out of this. And like, that could be like the best possible item. And then at that point, I'll just move BT to somebody else. Gets a frying pan here. Um, What is frying pan plus? Oh, it's shapeshifter emblem. Oh, that's, wait, that's that's perfect. Oh my God. Um, So yeah. And, ooh, and he's going to move the Renans over to Briar actually. Huh. His idea is that Briar actually is just strong enough in this spot that uh, I don't actually need more healing onto the Briar. I'm just going to go Renan's. Briar's going to have an insane amount of AD. I mean, it looks like a good call. This Briar's doing insane damage. Picks up a Shoujin here that's obviously going to go onto the Kog'Maw. We're just going to remove one of these items off. And yeah, the Frying Pan 
Uh, yeah, for Shapeshifter Emblem is actually beautiful here. Uh, allows it to fit sh six Shapeshifter over the Nora that we were playing earlier, um, which is which is really, really cool. And we get to Shapeshifter the Olaf, which is going to give him a little bit of extra um, just, you know, combat strength here. We pick up a, a random spite here. He's just going to throw it onto the Jinx here for some extra AD onto these units. I didn't see the effect there, but I, I assume it went onto Briar and to everybody here. But yeah, I mean, I don't know how much HP this Briar has, but it's certainly, uh, this Briar unit is just a mo I mean, Obviously, Six Hunter is doing a lot of work here, but this Briar, I feel like, is just so insane here. Going to get some suspicious trench coats onto the Nico and actually the Twitch here, which is pretty funny, but his idea is just that Elise is not doing anything. Um, okay, you probably prefer it on the Elise over the Twitch, I would think, but uh, I don't know. Uh, we're fighting... Uh, a pretty uh, pretty cool, just like six blaster board from Voidson here, but I don't think this board is capped enough. Yeah, we have a two star five cost. So we've been feeding the entire stage and they have, you know, just a, a one star smolder here. So it is light work for dish soap and another easy first from the world champ. I mean, this game did not look close. This game through no portion of the game did it look like somebody else was was on the path to winning besides dish soap. So just the power of the, the world champ um, and uh, a really, really fun game to watch to see how to play around six hunter and all these cool augments and stuff like that so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like comment and subscribe check my twitch on my links down below thank you guys once again for watching Bye.